Hi, from May 4th to May 15th, 2021, my origin screen from home is being exhibited at the Jacob Lawrence Gallery. In this video, you'll get to experience and see how I built my screen. Three of the biggest design challenges was making sure that the screen could be seen on both sides, that it's weatherproof and durable, and can be transportable. Outside of the Jacob Lawrence Gallery, the screen is going to be spending most of its life outside of my garage area. It's going to be a divider, a medium between the neighborhood and inside my house. It might travel to other places too, but given the circumstances, my knowledge of materials, and experimentation with new products, I designed a creative blueprint that would best showcase my work. First, I got two 4 inch by 4 inch by 10 foot length beams. We got them cut in half and got four five foot long wooden pillars. With my dad, we start with sanding down the pillars. We then decided to route the edges, giving the pillars a smooth rounded corner. To make sure things were working, we did a test run. The wooden pillars were then given a hammered black spray paint look. This paint style would hide any inconsistencies on the exterior of the wood. While that dries, I then focused on spray painting the decorative brackets I got from Home Depot. However, there was an issue. Since we routed the edges of the wooden pillars, the transition between bracket to pillar was sharp. So we decided to route the short exterior edge of the brackets as well. Flex sealed cinder blocks so the concrete wouldn't fragment and drop many cement rocks in the gallery space. This coating also made it easier to spray paint and much easier to handle. Up next we have the roof section. The roof is a very critical part of this build. It connects the pillars at a distance of across 8 feet. It needs to aesthetically match the look of the project. And it actually houses the actual screen and provides additional shelter for the art. For this 2 inch by 12 inch by 8 foot length piece of wood, we begin by routing the edges with a deep circular cut, something that alludes to Chinese style roofing. I then give it the smooth silk sonic sanding.
As smooth as the roof was, a wooden piece of that great length comes with a lot of scars. We used a wooden filler that comes out pink. dries as a natural wooden color. I hand sanded that roof. And hit it with some cranberry spray paint. Use that red paint to mimic the red color used on the Seattle Chinatown gate. It was windy the next day, so I made sure to tape down the newspaper so the newspaper wouldn't fly into the roof as it was drying. I also spray painted the cinder blocks cranberry as well to make it a matching set. Up next is building the custom frame that would hold the 4 feet by 8 feet origin screen. The screen was produced by Alpha Graphics. It's a max metal die bond, 3 millimeters thick. It's strong, very lightweight, and holds the design with longevity. Now, I could have looked into ways of doing a custom frame, but those would be very expensive. It might not even be weatherproof or durable. So I looked into substitutes, other ways to actually hold the screen up. What I stumbled upon on the internet was a PVC outdoor molding. This molding is rot proof, weather proof, and would be a perfect solution in holding and housing the four feet by eight feet screen. I made sure they were all the same length. pieces of this eight foot long PVC molding is because two pieces will be fastened together to pinch the max metal screen in between. With that being said, I can't have the two moldings directly making contact with each other and drill holes in between. I have to use my max metal sample and account for that spacing to make sure I maximize my contact in securing the screen. After properly drilling through the PVC molding, I gave it that mean spring green pop of color. be wondering how it connected the bottom frame to the top frame. Well, I wanted something that was very minimal in appearance, but tough. Something that could also slip in between the molds. So I came across Cable Ties and More. This company has 60 inch zip ties. I'll give a very scientific demonstration of my envisionments of how I would use these zip ties in securing the top to the bottom. The bottom zip tie head slides between the molds. To secure the top, I would only use the head of another zip tie. If you think that's crazy, these have a tensile strength of 175 pounds. My screen and frame weigh less than 30 pounds altogether. Now I can start assembling pieces together. I start with connecting the fence post to the cinder blocks, fastening my two PVC molds, and 
connecting the aluminum box track to the roof. versatility in detaching and attaching my screen for my wooden gate framework, I use an aluminum sliding door box track system from Orange Aluminum. Putting my screen on wheels gives from home the true functionality of a sliding screen. I then attach my decorative brackets onto my wooden pillars. Since the overall frame has to be transportable, each big piece cannot be screwed in, it has to be bolted securely. I called my uncle who is very knowledgeable and handy in woodworking and he told us to use hanger bolts, a tapered lag screw thread on one end and a machine bolt thread on the other. This was super clutch and a perfect way to secure the roof down. so many things coming together, it is now ready to be installed at the Jacob Lawrence Gallery.